Special thanks to Toys and Things in Danvers, Massachusetts, Reaper Miniatures, Off the Wall Games in Hadley, Massachusetts, Games and Friends in Springfield, Massachusetts, as well as Triple A Games Arena in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. If you enjoy the show, help the podcast grow. Give us a follow on Twitter at Lords Broken, join the community Discord, and maybe consider offering a small tribute to the old ones on our Ko-Fi. All these links and more can be found in our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash the Broken Lords. Thank you. Ricardo is an experienced soldier, so he's asleep by the time his head hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first night up either. Oh, should we have a watch? Eh, fuck it. I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> I mean, it can't be the heaviest sleep we're engaging in. No. We didn't travel far for one and for another. It's like... Just woke up not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, and it's, so. it's daytime. It's like... Like, I feel like I'm just dozing at best, but I'm trying yeah, to sleep. That's fair. So I'm like fake watching. I don't know. <laughs> you guys are resting probably sporadically. I imagine you're grabbing a few hours of sleep and then you kind of wake up for a little bit and try again later. Yeah, I would say in the times I'm up, I'm trying to see if there's any frequency in the calls of the beast now that Octomer heard it. Might hear any more shrills, but... The sun is sinking low on one of the times that you're up and about. You're nibbling on some gator jerky. Delicious. Just like chicken. It's a hell of a last meal to have. And... We'll say that, like, Vega, since that's specifically what you're trying to do, you're not far from the camp, but you're just a little ways closer, trying to keep your ears open. And you definitely hear, again, as the sun is just very low, it's just touching the top of the tree line. Mm. You feel it before you hear it, vibrations. And then, eventually, heavy, heavy footsteps. That's incredibly bad. Back in the camp, you guys actually do wake up. And you sense the ground trembling, and then you can hear it as well. Vega, who is closer, hunches down, basically like into a bush that's at the foot of a tree. Mm -hmm. And you just hear... Measured, regular steps. And you're not close enough to the tree line to see. I imagine, right? No, I would not go that far in without the rest of the group. You can hear the way the, the steps are escalating in volume, that it's getting fairly close to the tree line where you guys were. And when steps get loud, where you kind of imagine it's roughly straight ahead of you, like a quarter of a mile out, however far back you went, right. the pounding stops. And you hear a low hiss that sounds like steam. to as slowly as I can exfiltrate myself from that situation. If you need me to roll dice, I, I, I suppose I will. But I'm going to go as slow and careful as I possibly can. At this distance, this would be this would be a, a difficulty zero. Okay. You're like a quarter of a mile out, so. I'm going to make my way back to camp. Ricardo suggests we come out to the forest at a different angle. No one we came through. It seems to have... It's already caught our scent. It seems that way. Shit. It knows where we came out of. Uh, and he doesn't seem to be moving from it. Ricardo, can I ask you to climb a tree real quick? Ricardo looks to where he came from and looks to Octomer, and then he looks back, and this repeats another two more times. And then a very defeated sigh happens goes, I'll be right back. This tree here, I just need you to check with the direction of the wind. <laughs> okay. Do I have to roll of athletics for this? No, these trees are friggin' giant and easy to climb, okay. so... You know, I'll, I'll lick the finger, I'll point it up, see if I can feel where the wind's blowing. All right, the air is relatively still. Mm. As you climb and check and you climb and check, likely due to the walls of the valley and just the sheer amount of trees around. Mm -hmm. Once you get high enough that you can feel a breeze, it's gentle and it is blowing southward. All right. Not strong, and it's going from uh, north to south, basically. You're sure there wasn't any east or west? 
we are not to be that lucky today. Shit. Okay. Well then, we should move a couple miles either east or west and try to cross. I vote for the direction that's farther away from the dragon's house. I don't know where that is. Personally. Unfortunately. I realize the footsteps were massive and thundering, but did we get any kind of a directional sense from them? Yeah, straight north of your current position. Like Ricardo said, it's literally loitering around the spot where you guys were investigating. I would assume that the footprints that we saw were on every direction, right? Yeah, they were all over the place. Cold view of older ones off in one direction. Older footprints, I mean. Yeah, the, the older ones that he saw were going in a different direction. Okay. So the problem is, this thing seems to have our scent. So... So we've got some options. One, we can wait for like another week in the woods to try and hope he loses us before we try again. Two, we can start now and go as far as we can, either east or west, before trying to cross and just... Hope to God that by the time we get either east or west, he's either still fixated on us or he's found prey somewhere else. If the wind was blowing east or west, I would suggest we go downwind of him, and hopefully the wind could keep our scent away from him. Ricardo has an idea, though I don't know how viable it might be, but perhaps some sort of distraction? I was thinking, since there is such a distance between the clearing of this part of the woods and the next part of the woods, if we set up some, maybe some sort of fire on this side and have it spread that might be able to confuse the scent as we go another way around and since there is so much distance between the tree lines we don't run the risk of you know burning us on the other side of the tree uh on the other other side uh what if we leave some croc jerky behind too would a dragon care about a blazing tree line though it's not his hunting grounds that would be burning. Uh, yeah, Ricardo was more thinking that the smoke and everything would confuse the scent. Perhaps. But if the wind's blowing south, it's going to be blowing away from him. Maybe it will work in our favor right now. At this point, as long as we don't move north of it... North is where we need to get to, unfortunately. Yes, but... Okay. I don't think staying put is a good idea right now. Can we agree on that? For the most part, yes. And we need to go either east or west to take advantage of what the wind is doing right now while also not being a sitting duck. If we stay at this point of the north-south, but we move as much as we can either west or east, whichever, I mean, the wind won't blow our scent towards it right now. Correct. We'll have to account for if the wind changes, I guess. GM. You said there was a river to the east of us. Yes. The one that the croc came from, or was that a lake? It was a system of lakes, and it it is southeast of your current position. So we we have passed it now. Okay. Yes, yeah. Well, seeing as we have no other information, what if we tried to head east and hope there's a river? Yeah, cool. It would still get us out of his direct path, Mm -hmm. and if there is a river, that'll definitely help hide our scent and our tracks. Yeah. Uh, Unless anyone has any dire pressing need or want to head west, we don't know what's over there. Could be exactly what we're looking for is in that direction. It is a chance of a coin flip. Ricardo cares not either way. Let us go east. Okay. I figure the worst thing that could happen is we just end up going back west later. Well, the worst thing that could happen is that we all get eaten by a dragon. But I guess that's always (laughs) on the table here. That's the worst, worst thing, yes. But no, I think looking to see if there's a river that's powering that lake system to the east, I think that's a good idea. Powering? Is that the... What about a river? Feeding? I think it's feeding. Yeah, it is probably feeding. That sounds right. right yeah. <laughs> You'll hear that steamy hiss again. And it's followed by a horrific, like, shrill cry. And then there is a smashing sound. And you can see in the distance a tree fall. Okay, yeah, we need to move now. Call, grab your shit. <laughs> yeah, Cole, why do you leave your shit laying around all the time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Cole's the only one who hasn't really been talking. I assume he's just been off doing whatever Cole does. I think he's just watching us in rapt fascination. <laughs> he's checking out his herbs. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> With a roaring and crashing of trees, 
our heroes feel the goosebumps rise on their skin. It is clearly past time to be moving. 